Howdy, howdy, welcome back to my channel on building out a DIY expedition camper. And this is now video 111 out of this build series. So it's a lot of videos before this to go into way more details. But today we're gonna to get into a little more details about the shore power connections and how I can charge this camper up from shore power on any voltage, any frequency, anywhere in the world, and also really on any side. So I don't need to carry on a big long extension cord and still be able to connect anywhere depending on where those connections are. Let's get into it. All right, so how do I do my shore power connections? I actually have three, three shore power connections on this camper. And the reason why I have three is I have one that's just a standard 20 amp, 120 volt plug-in. And that's my standard one that I use. Just when I pull in the garage here, I can plug that in. 20 amps at 120 is perfectly fine. Even though I have a massive big 1800 amp hour battery system, it really doesn't matter if it takes a long time to charge because I'm not like pulling in and driving back out to go camping with an empty and driving back out an hour later to go camping again. This is not a reality. I'm gonna pull in, it's gonna be partially empty and it's gonna then stay here for days or a week and so it's got plenty of time to charge back up. It'll probably charge up even at 120 volts, 20 amps, it'll probably still charge up in a matter of hours. So it's not a big deal. The bottom line is that it works really well for all my standard connections and that's got a auto eject so that when I start the ignition here, it automatically go ahead and pops out. So if I just want to get in and drive away, I don't even have to think about it, disconnect it, I just start the ignition, it pops out, and I can pull right out of my RV garage and go. Now that also works for a standard 20 amp campground, or if I'm at someone's house, I can just plug in there as well. And, and that's already configured on my inverter to go ahead and D-rate down to like 15 amps or 13 amps or whatever I want it to be configured to. So if I go to someone's house and I'll blow their circuit, I'm gonna just go ahead and configure it down to like 12 or 13 amps so I don't make sure I don't exceed those. Now, I'm at a campground, standard US, we got 30 amps or 50 amps. The nice thing about these right here, big dongles, is at 30 amps, I can plug in any standard campground. I don't generally have to pay for some kind of a, you know added 50 amp circuit. Again, it's plenty to run everything I have and charge the batteries simultaneously. It's not like I'm running toaster ovens and microwaves and air conditioning nonstop. We're only all running on and off just from time to time. So that is more than enough at 30 amps to charge the batteries up and just run standard loads. Nice about these dongles, are very cheap, they're readily available, and of course they also have a nice watertight connection. And I can buy them in either 15 or 20 amp. I prefer just buy them in a standard 15 amp, even though my plug is actually good for 20 amp. There's a 20 amp circuit here. Again, it's more than enough power, and this way I can use it really to anybody's house or anything else. And I like these standard just RV 30 amp connections. One, they're watertight, they got a nice little kind of covering here, it keeps rain off when it's even open. Two, they take these standard dongles. When it's got power, hard to see, but that little light lights up right there. And then it just plugs right in. And when it plugs right in, I can actually screw it down so it's got a nice watertight, solid connection. Of course, this cord's a little tight here, but when that points down, even if it's a rain, it'd be covered as would this be. And you can see it's even got a nice green little light here. Let me show you that a little bit more to tell me that I now have it connected and power is flowing into this. So I can also now keep this running right here at a standard campground at 30 amps, again, more than enough. And I have this on the standard campground side for at least how we do it in the US. And then, of course, I have the same connection as well. So I have one dongle, one cord. I can buy different adapters for wherever I need any kind of different plug converter for anyone in the world. So that also plugs into my standard 30 amp connection because that'll go right to my international converter, shore power connected converter, which will support 85 to 250 volts, 50 hertz or 60 hertz. So it'll run anywhere in the world. It'll support that. Again, I could just buy whatever little plug converter I need, use my same dongle, same connector, and then also get another 30 amp connection out in another port out near the backside of the camper. And that way I can use that for any plug anywhere in the world, but also in campgrounds, maybe that's where just the shore power connection is closer or more convenient, or someone's house that I'm plugged into, I can use that as well and just convert right down to a lower amperage. And now that's all nicely sealed up. And again, readily, readily available and cheap. So that's my way of approaching this. And why did I buy this in a 15 amp plug instead of the 20 amp, which has one of these spades here, the hot, turn it at a 90 degree? or maybe it's a neutral turn to 90 degree. 
Why did I buy this at 50 amps instead of a 20 amp? Is because why? Because I can plug in any standard extension cord that you can buy in the US and a standard extension cord is 15 amps. Get a 20 amp one is way more expensive. Now yes, I can charge at a little bit higher rate, but the reality is that I gotta have a much bigger, beefier extension cord. But also, I'm not gonna plug in a 20 amp at someone's house. All pretty much standard residential outlets are 15 amp. They're only a 15 amp breaker. They're only a 15 amp circuit. Even though we typically think of them as a 20 amp circuit, they're really not. They're only a 15 amp, which means they're only really good for 13 amps or 80% rated. So that's why I buy this in that standard one. I can use a standard extension cord. And again, if I go to someone's house, I'm not gonna be charging at 20 amps anyways, because they're not gonna have a 20 amp circuit readily available on the outside of their house or somewhere else. But again, that's still plenty to run my camper here. It's Everything's designed to run off grid. It's designed to run its own battery system. All I'm doing is replenishing what I'm using, and that's going to happen over time. Am I using anything at night? No. Unless I've got air conditioning or heating running all night, but even then it's going to be a minimal amount. Right? It's going to cycle on and off. So this works really well for me. Here's my, here's my auto eject shore power right now. I have it plugged in right here. I can just simply pull this out. You see the light go off to say I don't have power. And I can just simply flip this up. A little bit hard to do with one hand. You can see that right there is a 20 amp circuit, which I have all the way powered up here. So this will take a 15 or a 20 amp plug into it, but it's still good for the full 20 amps, regardless of which plug I put in there, because the wire's size enough for it. But now all they gotta do is just simply plug that in there, and you can see that green light come right back on. That green light now indicating that I power there. By the way, these cables here are all just some short jumper cables set up for some temporary stuff I've got going on. So now, let's go ahead and start the engine and you're gonna see this thing shoot out. And that's the auto eject when we start the ignition. Here we go. You see that? All I do is put the key into the final position before starting and it shoots that right out. And this goes to red saying, hey, you can't plug in. So now I can just go ahead and start the vehicle, drive right out. I don't have to worry about pulling this cord out of the wall, the ceiling, you know, breaking something, all that stuff, right? Just automatically takes care of it. Now my inverter just go ahead and went to battery power. That's all it's doing right now. Instead of being charged by shore, when I come back into the garage or pull up to a campground or someone else's house or somewhere I've got a circuit available, I just plug right in there. And that's it. And don't worry about these extra wires here. Some stuff that's still being wired up. So there you go. That's an easy way to go ahead and have now three shore power connections, one on each side of the vehicle and one also in the back. The benefit of doing this one on the auto eject is that I'm not going to see this one when I get in the vehicle. I just want to drive away by myself. The one on the other side, the driver's side, which is right by the driver's door there, I'm going to see that's connected. So that's why that one's a manual. Makes it really easy. And that's the higher powered one because these are they already expensive and they only come in 15 or 20 amps. You get them at 30 amps, they go really expensive and all that. That works really well. It's all weather tight, sealed up, and they all go into separate circuits. This one and the one on the other side each go into their own circuit on the inverter so they can control each one and regulate each one down on average separately. I th in theory, I could actually even charge both. Well, I'm not sure if the inverter will accept both at the same time, but I could have both plugged in at the same time, be fine because they're not interconnected with each other except in separate circuit breakers and at the inverter to manage it. And then my third one goes into a separate international shore power converter and so that one will take any voltage. So I could use that here in the US at just standard 120 volts or 230 or 240 volts or even 208 volts. I could use it of course in Europe at 230, 240, 250, same in Asia, Africa, South America in a lot of ways where those voltages are very common. And also I could use it 50 Hertz in places like Europe or Asia where that is also most common. So it doesn't really matter where I am in the world, I could always plug into shore power, which is great because sometimes camped out in very rainy, snowy, cloudy weather somewhere for a little bit extended period of time, or if I have to go ahead and store it for a while, the great thing is, is any one of these three shore power connections will now keep the batteries charged, heating and air conditioning can run off it, the refrigeration. So I can park the vehicle as long as I need to, walk away, fly away, go and do what I need to do, come back to it, and the battery system should be charged up. The heating and cooling I can keep operating, I can keep the refrigeration and freezer running, as, as well as anything else I wanna keep running. And the other benefit is too, is all of them now also provide 
an auxiliary power output to the starter battery. So to keep the starter battery trickle charge, which is really key, so I know that when I come back, uh, whatever little phantom loads are on that starter battery, now I, it's going to be charged up too. So I can come back, I can build to start that up, I can start the, ha the house batteries are going to be full and ready to go. Plus, of course, the soul on the roof also can charge all of them. It'll charge the house batteries, which then, of course, subsequently also provides a triple charge to the starter battery. Now, if I need to, because the way I wired up my system, I have dual DC converters that go from 24 volt to 12 volt. So I can also, at a higher rate, instead of just a trickle charge, charge now my, from my house batteries at 24 volt down to my starter battery at 12 volt at a far higher load. Or if I'm doing having a heavy winching operation, I can leverage the house batteries to help support that. And I also have the dual chargers that go from 12 volt to 24 volt. So for some reason or another, I am just operating the vehicle here and my main 24 volt alternator goes out or I need extra power to charge the house battery sooner because they've gotten really run down. I now can leverage both my 24 volt, 150 amps at 24 volts, so that's 300 amps at 12 volts, alternator to charge my house batteries very quickly, and also the factory alternator 180 amps at 12 volts to go ahead and now also charge my house batteries at a higher rate. And or also all of those support winching operations or the 24 volt big air compressor if I'm refilling up all the tires because aired them way down, I want to get them aired back up much faster. I can keep that voltage really high to keep that air compressor running well. So it's got a lot of benefits in doing it this way. Plus I have redundancy. So if either system, 12 volt or 24 volt, for some reason a component fails or I have to lock it out for maintenance or for some other issue or have a DC to DC converter fail, I've got a second one already there. Whether it's a fuse up blue or the converter blue or something else, I've got a second one, its own separate fuse, its own separate wiring, already ready to go. So I've got full redundancy of those systems in addition to the added capacity of each. It's a really nice setup. It gives me the ability to charge at a higher rate in either direction as well as having that redundancy and all the way down to even my shore power connections. So that way just from an ease of running cables around the camper, wherever I'm parked, I can get power easily where I need to go. Instead of having to carry big, long extension cords, I can carry really just one extension cord. And I know it should be able to reach because I can reach it from either side of the camper or also the back. So I can back in somewhere or come up to either side and be close to where that outlet is to be able to plug in. Really convenient, really simple. That's how I'm doing it. All right, well, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful to you and gave you some ideas for your expedition camper, whether you're building yourself or you're gonna modify something that somebody already built for you. I've got a lot of cool things coming up, really cool things, a lot more that I'm excited to share with you all. Thanks for watching and sharing with others.